Hello, and thank you for joining us for Season 4, Episode 4 of Adventures in Fly Tying. And now here's your host, Joe Cornwall. The Troth Bullhead is just a fabulous early season pattern. It was created by Al Troth, the guy who created uh, the Elk Caracatus, and it's really a neat fly. One of the things I love about it is the fact that it has that lighter belly, uh, darker back, very natural. It's the imitation of uh, a bullhead, actually a mad tom, the Taurus Flavus, which is a very common bait fish uh, here in the Ohio and in warm waters everywhere. But it's also a great imitation of uh, a yellow belly or a white belly bullhead, which is a great fly and a great bait, not only for smallmouth, but for largemouth and even steelhead. So let's go ahead and tie one. I'm going to use a Mustad SL53 UBL. This is a signature salmon hook, and I like that because it has a nice return taper on the eye. Uh, to tie this fly properly, we're going to use two threads. We're going to use a gel spun for spinning the deer hair, and we're going to use a black for the base. Start the thread at about one-third back on the shank and wrap a full underbody of thread to a point directly above the hook point. The reason we're going to do this is that gives a nice spot for the lead to adhere. Now, another thing is don't cut off that excess thread right there. I'm going to show you a little trick um, when you're working with lead wire. I'm going to use a .030 lead wire and we're going to take off four or five inches of that because I'm going to cover the middle third of this hook with 10 wraps of 030. Let's take one just right about there. And once you've got that lead in place, so all you gotta do is wiggle it back and forth and pull down, and you'll just get that, that piece right off of there rather than trying to ruin your scissors by cutting it. It'll break right off. Now, this piece of thread that I told you not to cut off, we're gonna build a ramp, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hold that thread, so that way the thread as we advance it back doesn't get down between the lead and cause it to move. We can build a little bit of a thread ramp in the front. Make a smooth transition into the lead, and then once again, see how that holds the thread above the lead body? I'm not gonna cut my thread that way and I'm gonna build a little transition in the back. So a little trick that you can use. It's really a great trick when you're tying smaller flies like nymphs with a lead body. Now you can go ahead and tie and cut that off. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna start by putting in the tail. In this case, I'm using a cream marabou. I'm gonna moisten that a little bit. And I want my tail about the length of my hook shank. So that's my tie-in point right there. I'm gonna tie that in three or four tight wraps and I'm using a 210 denier thread, black thread, this is a Flymaster Plus. And I'm just going to bind that excess material before I cut off those stems up here. Because that's going to build up a nice thick body which is something I want for this fly. Now, the next step, I want to use black ostrich hurls. I want to select approximately 12 to 15, at the most maybe 20 of these ostrich hurls. Even up the tips on ostrich hurls by literally breaking the tips off because a lot of times they're very fragile anyway. So you can break off those tips and that'll save you the fly from getting a little bit ragged as you fish it. Measure up your ostrich so it is as long as and just a little bit longer than the marabou that's underneath it. Now, tie that on with just a few wraps to hold that in place and do not cut off that excess material. We're going to leave that excess material in place. The next step is we're going to tie in the peacock curl. The peacock curl we're going to use about the same amount. We're going to select about 15 or 20 peacock curls. You can't really use too much on this fly. Even up those tips. I like the peacock curl now to be just a little bit longer than the black marabou or the black ostrich hurl. So you see I have marabou, ostrich hurl, peacock forming a nice natural taper to the back of the fly. Once again, we're going to tie that on with just three medium tight wraps. Do not cut off that excess material because here comes a very important part of this fly. Keeping the peacock hurl on top of the ostrich, fold the entire assembly back take a couple of wraps over it. That tail is now locked in forever, plus you see I have a beautiful smooth transition to that lead for the underbody. Advance your thread to the front of the underbody, now we're ready to tie in the yarn. 
The yarn that I'm going to use is an Antron Sparkle yarn. This is Aunt Lydia's Sparkle yarn, but you can use any kind of an Antron. You could also use a dubbing. I don't like a tremendous amount of flash in my flies early in the year, so I find that this Antron gives me just enough flash uh, for this to be interesting to the fish without necessarily spooking them when they're lethargic in those cold water conditions. Now that I have the yarn tied in, go ahead and give that a twist so that you rope the yarn, because once again, I want to build up that body uh, and I don't want the yarn to be laying flat yet because I want that body to have a nice, fat, carrot-style taper. And I'm going to bring that yarn all the way back to where I tied that in. Now I can unwind the yarn and bring it back and tie it in flat. So now I'm giving a smooth, somewhat fuzzy, a little bit sparkly, very tough underbody to this fly. And we're really building up a nice, meaty morsel. So this thing really looks like a little catfish. And that's the whole idea behind this fly. Now, real important trick to tying the trough bullhead is when we do the, 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 the shell back, if you will. We're going to take that material that we folded over, and that's going to be the shell back. Now you can see this is how we get the dark peacock curl on the back, the black ostrich curl and the tail so that everything matches. But here's a trick, don't tie that down tight. If you do, the minute a fish bites, those are gonna start to break. Push that back and give it a little bit of slack, give it a little bit of a pouch there, and then tie it in at that point, so it's got a little bit of slack. That way, as it gets wet, those hurls will not break. You've just actually tied a more durable fly, and you've even given it a little bit more bulk. Now we can go ahead and, tie, and clip away that excess material. What I'm going to do next, is I'm going to literally whip finish, and get rid of this thread, because I'm done with it. The next step, I want to go to a gel spun thread. This is a 130 denier gel spun thread. And I'm going to use this because I'm going to stack deer hair. And you really need a much heavier thread to stack deer hair. The other thing about this thread is it's extremely hard to cut. So sometimes you want to use a razor or some very, very sharp scissors. I'm going to tie, as we recall what this fly looked like, I'm going to tie the skirt that goes around this in the black. And it's only going to be on the top. And then we're going to do a blue bottom and a black top to kind of keep that whole bicolor uh, uh, pattern that going with this. So using a good quality black deer hair, what you want to look for is this is uh, a deer hair that's got a relatively quick taper, but you'll notice that the shafts of the deer hair, nice and straight, very hollow. This will flare beautifully. I want to cut off a bunch of this deer hair that's about the thickness of a pencil. So that's a good bunch of deer hair. The next thing that I want to do is get rid of all of that under fur that we have there. So what I want to do is measure that. So the tips of the hair go just beyond the tie-in point of where that tail is going to be. That's the length of the collar. That's my tie-in point. Get rid of the material that you're not going to use to spin after that. And now, using two wraps of gel spun, pull down. You're going to have that just give you a nice little flare. And you notice that I use my left hand to hold that material on the top of the hook. So I flared it only on 180 degrees from one side to the other. And I've got a nice flare. Advance my gel spun in front of it. Now we're ready to start tying in that, that two-tone head that's going to take us up to the front. I'm going to use blue on the bottom and black on the top. So the next step, take some of my blue bucktail. Same thing. Don't be afraid to work with a large bunch. You want to use a good amount of material. Get rid of that soft under hair. You can actually use a, a comb or a brush to get rid of that if you want to. And there are deer hair combs that'll make this a little bit easier and certainly a little bit neater. I'm tying at a fly tying show, as, as I'm sure you can hear in the background. Cut off those tapered tips and the excess thickness on the bottom. That's about the diameter of the fly that I want to use, so that's how much I want to, material I want to use. Using two wraps, I want to go ahead and bring that material on the bottom and leave it to hang. I'm not going to pull that tight yet. Because I'm going to stack the material, I want to be able to have a clean line, so I want the black to go on the back of it.